This year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry has gone to Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Charpentier for their work on CRISPR, and I am so excited. So beyond excited. This, like other videos in my science news series, is part one of two. This is a video talking about the news, and then next week on Monday, October 12th at noon Pacific time, I want to hold a live stream answering your questions and talking with you about this, not at you. So let's all jump on the same page first. I made a video about the ins and outs of CRISPR a few years ago that you can watch here, but CRISPR, or the CRISPR-Cas system when we talk about it today, refers to a molecular tool that lets scientists edit DNA. It's got two parts, an enzyme that can cut DNA, like molecular scissors, and an RNA guide that helps the enzyme target the right place to cut. And by cutting DNA, you can break genes or insert new pieces of DNA and really start to examine what each gene does much faster and more efficiently than we ever could have before. And this is important. Gene editing is important not because scientists want to add horns to horses to make unicorns or to make giant flying squirrels. It's important because one of the best ways that we have to learn what a gene it does is to see what happens when it's broken. It's like looking at all of the parts under the hood of a car and not knowing what they each do, and then taking one out to see what happens. If suddenly your car's windshield wipers stop spraying out fluid, then maybe the piece you took out is the windshield wash reservoir. Now you have a better idea of what process it was involved in and what it might do. So we do the same thing with genes. Break it, remove it, or turn it off, and see what happens. This can tell you what a gene does. Gene editing is also important for medicine. Some human diseases are caused by small changes in your DNA. A single letter change here, or a short addition or subtraction of a few bases, or sometimes something a bit more. And these small changes can cause a gene to be expressed at a lower level, or cause a protein to be misformed. But what if we could go in and precisely change your DNA so that that gene is expressed at a normal level again? or that protein forms correctly. CRISPR could have and does have huge implications for a number of diseases. But I wanna talk a bit about how we got here and why this is so exciting to me. CRISPR isn't just something that we built in the lab. It started off as a bacterial immune system, evolved to remember and fight invading viruses. And aren't we all fighting viruses ourselves right now? But scientists like Doudna and Charpentier recognized that maybe this cool bacterial system could be transformed into something that we could use. Now, there were gene editing tools before CRISPR, but they were expensive and hard to use and just not that efficient. But in 2012, Doudna and Charpentier, along with some amazing grad students and postdocs in their labs, showed that they could take pieces of the CRISPR system from bacteria simplify them, refine them, and then use them to cut a specific piece of DNA that they decided on in a test tube. And this was revolutionary. By the time I was in my first year of grad school, people were already using CRISPR to do new and amazing things, and the field has just exploded since. Groups showed that you could use CRISPR inside living cells. They modified CRISPR to turn genes on or off without actually editing the sequence. New and improved versions of the system have been made to cut both strands of DNA or just nick a single strand, or to put new DNA into a spot of the genome that you specify, or to more precisely change and substitute the DNA bases, all kinds of things. And we've used CRISPR to help select pieces of DNA for sequencing or for imaging. There's even a CRISPR-based test to detect the virus that causes COVID-19, all kinds of different applications. I cannot understate how rapidly and amazingly this field has expanded and how much it has changed how we do biology. Before, it was a long and laborious process for scientists to change DNA in order to study it. But now, it's so simple that I have CRISPR plasmids in my freezer. I just did a CRISPR experiment at home a couple weeks ago as part of an upcoming lab with mini PCR Bio, who you know that I love. The lab's not out for another couple months, but it is so easy that you too can do it from home. CRISPR has made gene editing possible in so many different organisms, from bacteria to mice to butterflies. It has made genetic research so much more accessible in a lot of organisms where it was previously really hard to do. And CRISPR is being used in clinical trials to try and treat disease. Now, it won't work for all diseases, but there are some that are caused by just one or two small changes in your DNA. And this is where CRISPR could be used to go in and edit those changes back to a normally functioning copy of the gene. Because of this, there are currently clinical trials using CRISPR to try and fight certain types of cancers, some blood diseases, HIV, and some forms of blindness. This is truly amazing. And beyond just the cool science, I really looked up to Doudna and Charpentier as role models. They were kicking butt in genetics at the same time that I was getting my PhD, and the field was really accelerating, and in a lot of ways, their feet were on the gas pedal. 
Doudna gave a talk at Stanford while I was there that had an associated lunch for students and she just seemed like such a down to earth and humble human. And that was really important for me to see that you don't have to constantly be cutthroat or showing off how smart you are to be a leading scientist in your field. You could also be a seemingly genuine and kind person, and that was great. This is also the first time that a pair of women has won a Nobel Prize in the sciences, and it feels really good that those are my role models who are doing that. So what does this all mean for you or for me? Why do I care so much? Why am I so excited? So Nobel Prizes in Science are often not awarded for a long time after the discovery is made. This year's Physiology or Medicine Prize went to a discovery made in the 70s and 80s. But this one happened in under a decade from the publication of the paper to the award of the prize. And I think that's because it took so little time for the impact of this discovery to become clear. CRISPR has changed how we do science research and it has the potential to change how we do medicine. And these have huge impacts for all of us. But of course, as soon as it became clear that CRISPR could edit DNA in human cells, people started wondering if we could edit humans. Editing human genes in consenting patients is one thing. The clinical trials using CRISPR now use it in cells that cannot pass their DNA onto other generations, so any change that is made in the patients will not be passed on to their children. But while there were guidelines laid out by organizations in the scientific community a few years ago that strongly recommended against CRISPR editing in cells called germline cells that could pass on their edits to future generations, a scientist secretly conducted this kind of work anyway, resulting in the birth of at least two children who had been genetically modified as embryos. There were a lot of scientific problems with the work that he did, as well as a number of ethical issues, way too many for this video today, but I think it really emphasized to a number of people in the scientific community that we couldn't think of this as a future issue. This is a now issue. And it's not just the scientific community that needs to be thinking about how we use tools like CRISPR, because it doesn't just affect the scientific community. It affects you, and it affects me. It affects policymakers and parents and caretakers and farmers and everyone. And so I think that everyone needs to be included in the conversations around how we use these things. CRISPR is an amazing tool. I love it so much. I think it has amazing positive potential and it has already done so much good. But if you're not working with DNA every day, I understand how it can sound kind of wild. It can be really easy to watch a movie about CRISPR creating giant crocodiles and gorillas and wonder if that's possible. It can be easy to hear someone talk about gene editing a plant and wonder if that means it's still safe to eat. It can sound scary that we're using it in humans even though the clinical trials are very safe and really, really cool. So I want to talk about it because we all need to be talking about it because this is a super cool tool that is near and dear to my heart and I just want everyone to know about it. So let's talk together about it next Monday because I could go on for another hour here. I've already gathered some questions from Instagram and TikTok, but leave your questions in the comments below or on Patreon if you're a patron. Huge, huge thank you to my patrons who let me take a day to suddenly make a video in a day and post it and edit it and do all that. I could not do it without you guys. I'll prepare to answer as many of these questions as possible, and I'll also answer questions in the chat on Monday as well. Go forth, do science, and congratulations to two of my science role models. I know that I had absolutely no part in the discovery of CRISPR, but this feels like a big win for the whole community. I'm so excited, like truly excited.